Well, thank you very much. It's a great honor to be with President Duda of Poland. And we've become friends over the last uh, fairly short period of time, but uh, it's been — it was quite a day in Poland when we made the speech. You said some nice remarks. I said some nice remarks. And a lot of people remembered what we said. And that was a big uh, — that was a big afternoon, a big weekend, and something we uh, — that I will never forget, frankly. And I know the United States was very well received. The people of Poland love the United States. We love the people of Poland. We love Polish people. I think it's uh, — you can tell me, how many uh, Polish people ancestry do we have in the United States right now? What is it, approximately? How many people? How many people? Yes. Here, here it's here a tremendously United States. large number. Oh, yes. it's about 10 million. Yeah. It's one of the largest. Million. They're great people. They're fantastic people. So, thank you. We're going to be discussing I Ukraine. met them yesterday in New Britain. That's right. That's right. I know exactly what you're saying. I will be discussing trade and many other things. We have some uh, long meetings set up over the next uh, two weeks. But uh, Poland has been a very, very uh, great country as far as the United States is concerned. We do a lot of business with Poland, and uh, they also make product, and they sell a lot of us product — a lot of us really very good product. You have great craftsmen, and that's what we like, is great craftsmen. But so do we. So we've had a great trading relationship. Uh, the visa waivers are in store, which is already approved, and we're doing it mechanically now so that we get them done as soon as we can. So it's much easier to get to Poland and to the United States for the people that want to get there. It's something that's a very important uh, — it was very important, I think, for the President to get that done. And he was able to do it through a lot of hard work. He was able to do it. So I congratulate you. And that's something that's going to be great for a lot of, as you say, for the 10 million people living in the United States that want to travel easily to Poland. Uh, it's our honor. I always will to visit the United States with more Polish people as a tourist. That's true. That's true. Year. That'll work both ways. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, thank you. We're going to be cooperating in so many different ways, and uh, militarily, primarily, uh, we'll be moving uh, soldiers there. Poland has borne the expense. Uh, they're going to be building us facilities that uh, I'm sure will be very beautiful. They're, it's being worked out right now, but. Poland came to us. They asked us if we would uh, put some troops there. They will bear the entire expense, and we appreciate that. And we worked out a deal. Uh, perhaps, Mike, you'd want to say something about we'll that? Out, we'll put out the full document so you can see all the, the hard work that both our teams have done, both the, our Department of Defense and the Poland Ministry of Defense have done great work uh, to lower it and to allow us to do better information, sharing all the things that, that uh, friendly partner countries do to keep each other and we'll most likely be moving troops from other places in Europe as opposed to new troops from America. Are you going to send more order? troops to Poland in the future? Are you considering? Well, we'll talk to the President and the others about that, yeah. Mr. President, did you order a review? Did you initiate a review of Ukraine's aid in order to um, encourage them to investigate Joe Biden? I think what happens if you look at uh, Ukraine, and very important to me, why is it Europe — in fact, I was speaking about this to the President — to President Duda. Why is it Europe uh, spending more money? Why is it always the United States spending money? I've been complaining about this to my people for a long time. Uh, we spend so much money, not only to Ukraine, but to other places. And why isn't Germany spending more money? Why isn't France? Why aren't other countries in Europe <coughs> helping Ukraine more? Why is it always the United States? And I've been saying that from the beginning. And I don't like it that it's only us. Despite that, we've given far more than the Obama administration. He used to send sheets and pillows, and we sent anti-tank guns and weapons. Uh, but we really do. And, and when I spoke with — I had a great conversation with the new president of Ukraine. And during that conversation, we discussed it. Uh, perhaps you'll see it. Perhaps you won't see that. It depends on what we want to do. But we had a great conversation, very, very uh, — a very nice conversation, too. But one of the things we've discussed is, why is it Europe helping Ukraine more? Why is it always the United States? That's bothered me from day one. It's not fair to the United States. Mr. President, when are you going to visit Poland? You Say it? When are you going to visit Poland? I'll be there fairly soon. Uh, we've had a, a very open uh, 
standing invitation, and I'll be there very soon. That was something I really loved doing that. We made a speech. Uh, even the fake news gave me great reviews on that speech, so I was very happy. So in that case, it wasn't fake. It was real. That was real news. <laughs> Why have you decided to, to increase U.S. military presence in Poland? Is it because of a Russian threat? No, I don't think so at all. I think it's just because we have a president of Poland who I like, who I respect, and he asked whether or not we'd be willing to do that. And I said, uh, well, you know, there'll have to be uh, installations built. And they said they're willing to do that. And we worked out a deal, and it's my honor. Uh, again, we have 10 million Polish, in terms of heritage, Polish people in the United States, certainly special parts of the United States. And they're great people. It's a great country. They've done very well, and their economics are very good. They've had an economy that's been very strong stronger than most. So uh, we worked out a deal, and I think it's great for Poland, and it's very good for us. Sir, is this is later a done deal already? Will uh, citizens of Poland be able to come to the United States exactly. soon with that? Very soon, yeah. We have to work out structurally. In other words, from the uh, we have to get it done. But uh, they qualify. Uh, we've worked together very hard on that. But now they qualify, Georgette. And uh, we're going to be able to work that out very quickly. I think over the next couple of months, we could have it done. And I know Poland's been looking for that. How many years have you been looking for that, the waivers? How many years have you been? How many? 30. 30. 30. 30 is a long time. I didn't know it was that long. But we got it done. Trump gets it done. Other people don't get it done. We get it done. That was a good one. That's good for everybody. On the, on the aid question, aid from a moment ago, did you tell the Ukrainian leader that they would have the aid only if they investigated Joe Biden and his family? No, I didn't. No, I didn't. I didn't do it. Well. But Joe Biden said it about his son. Joe Biden was very dishonest what he did. What he did is he said, if they don't do uh, this or that and get rid of a certain prosecutor, Joe Biden said it. But because you're a faker, you in particular, you're a fake news group of people, you don't want to report that. I didn't do it. And you can, I hope you're going to be able to see a call, because I didn't do it. You know, everybody's looking for that call. And keep going the way you do it, because when you see the call, you're going to be very surprised. No, but Joe Biden, let me, let me just be quiet. Joe Biden is the one that did a very, very bad thing when he said that. And I think it was $1.2 billion he wasn't going to give unless they got rid of a prosecutor who was investigating his son and the company that his son works for. Then you also say, how much money did his son make from the Ukraine? And then ask another question, how much money did his son make from China based on energy? He knows nothing about energy. So why did he leave China? Why did he leave Ukraine with all this money? So Joe Biden was very uh, dishonest. Now, when you see the call, if you see it, I hope you see it, frankly, uh, you will find out that I did not do that at all. And you'll be very disappointed when you see it. It's really a disgrace. It really is a situation where it, it just shows the press you've had such a bad week between Justice Kavanaugh and this and other things. It's showing how dishonest so many members of the press are, not all of you, but so many members of the press are so totally dishonest. But this is a case, I hope you get to see the call, because your question, you will see, I did not ask for, uh, did, I did not make a statement that you have to do this or I'm not going to give you aid. I wouldn't do that. I wouldn't do that. With that being said, what I want is, I want, you know, we're giving a lot of money away to Ukraine and other places. You want to see a country that's going to be not corrupt. The president is a good man. He got elected on the fact that he was going to get rid of corruption in Ukraine. That's, I think, the primary reason he got elected. So he gets elected on the basis of ending corruption in Ukraine. Well, I think that's good, and that's what I want to see. But when Biden does a thing like that, then there's still corruption, and that's not good. You, sir, you can release, you can authorize at least the transcript. Will you do that, I can sir? do it very easily, but I'd rather not do it from the standpoint of uh, all of the other conversations I have. I may do it, because it was a very innocent call on both his part and my. We had a very nice call. It was really a congratulatory call, because he had just won. It was just confirmed, and he's the new president. And I think he's going to do an excellent job. But remember, he got elected on the basis of uh, the biggest part was corruption in his campaign. And so he wants the same thing, and he's looking for the same thing as I am. 
He did a very good job. It was a very nice call. I hope you get to see it. And I hope you get to see it soon. What is the Iran Iran question, sir? What? The, on Iran, the Iranian foreign minister... Boris said, Johnson. Uh, you you want to say Boris no, no. Johnson? No, I'm talking about the Iranian foreign no, you, minister. You, you mentioned Boris Johnson yes. at the beginning. No, of the year. Iranian foreign minister. Because he wants a new deal with Iran, sure. right? But the Iranian are saying now that they're willing to negotiate to end the war in Yemen. Do you take this seriously? Say it again. The Iranian foreign minister. Talk up, please. The Iranian foreign minister is saying that they are willing to negotiate to end the war in Yemen. Do you take this statement seriously? Well, I think it's a very big positive statement that they said that. I haven't heard it. I've been here and having lots of different meetings. We just had a very good meeting with Pakistan, by the way. We had a great meeting on religious liberty, I think, when you get right down to it, Mike. That was pretty much incredible. It was the first time that the President of the United States was involved in a meeting such as that. Uh, no, I think that uh, Boris Johnson made a strong statement saying that he'd like to see a new agreement. And I think that's good. And if what you're saying about Yemen is true, I like that also. We haven't heard that yet. That's a very positive thing if that's the case. On the whistleblower, you say you want the transcript of the call released. Do you also want I didn't the say that at all. Do you also I didn't want say that at all. It may get released. I didn't say that at all. I don't think it's a great precedent to be releasing calls with foreign countries, heads of foreign countries. So I don't think it's a great precedent. So I didn't say I was going to release it at all. I will tell you it's a great call. It's a very honorable call. It's a nice call. Uh, the Ukrainian government last night, very strongly, they announced that this call was a very nice call. There was, And they also said there was no pressure put on them, like the character over to your left. Uh, there was no pressure put on them whatsoever. I put no pressure on them whatsoever. I could have. I think it would probably, possibly have been okay if I did. But I didn't. I didn't put any pressure on them whatsoever. You know why? Because they want to do the right thing, and they know about corruption. And they probably know that Joe Biden and his son are corrupt. They probably know that. Joe Biden and his son are corrupt, all right? But the fake news doesn't want to report it because they're Democrats. If that ever happened, if a Republican ever did what Joe Biden did, if a Republican ever said what Joe Biden said, They'd be getting the electric chair by right now. Look at the double standards. You people ought to be ashamed of yourself. And not all. We have some great journalists around. But you got a lot of crooked journalists. You're crooked as hell. Okay, thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed it. Thank you. Thank you very much.